In this episode, we're talking about integrating voice recognition with your projects using an Echo Dot and a Photon. Then we'll be talking about how in the heck you go about sequencing thousands of RGB pixels in a mega matrix. Stay tuned. Hey, so don't get me wrong, I love this stuff. I wish I could work more on it, actually. But unfortunately, it doesn't pay for itself. All the materials, the lighting, the camera, the tools. These are just things that I enjoy using and I'm passionate about sharing. So when opportunities come around for me to make some money so that I can help fund future projects, then I have to jump all over them. This time of year, that typically means that you have people interested in doing holiday displays, large, complex holiday displays. Be it at a commercial location or a personal event, people generally want to show their spirit and they may not always know how to do that. I have a few friends in the industry and occasionally they reach out to me for some help, but they never ask me to do the easy stuff. They always want me to do the complex, challenging stuff, like a giant mega matrix of RGB pixels that needs to have all of this nice creative animations and stuff on it. So how do you go about sequencing that? Where do you begin? When they approach me, generally I want to get more details around the creative, you know, what's the energy or the vibe or the theme that they're going for? Are there specific colors? Can I see the layout? How does it all fit in together? You know, for me, I put on my designer hat and I go in and understand the color balance and understand the theme and how we can work with the audio track to be able to make it all come together and look nice. And that can be a challenge and it uses various graphic design tools as you can imagine. But once I have an understanding of what characteristics and criteria I'm trying to meet, then you generally have to break it down and for some particularly complex displays, you may have to sequence individual components separate from one another just because of the size and complexity of them. In in this case, we're doing a large mega matrix that covers the entire chimney on a house. Um, and to that regard, it's basically turning their chimney into a big screen TV. So you can put any type of graphics and animation on there that you want based on the creative input that we got from the client and just using my intuition and following the narrative of the song. Then we can build some creatives using some Adobe tools to create some motion graphics that then we can translate into actual RGB pixel commands. And so let's go through that process. First we're going to pull together some of the creative elements, get some graphics that we're going to use. We'll perform the motion graphic animations in Adobe After Effects. We'll generate a video from that and then we'll use the video to parse into a light sequencing software application which will then be able to generate the commands to perform those animations on the actual lights. So it sounds a little complex, it's pretty straightforward. We'll walk through the process. All right, so our goal here today is to break down a fairly complex process and help you understand at least the tools that you would need to get involved in and just understand conceptually and fundamentally what you need to do. Um, so basically, after discussing the creative ideas, the audio content, the type of style and energy that they want for their show, I'll take that away and create some storyboards and come up with some thoughts and ideas. And then ultimately that results in doing additional research to understand and find graphics that will support the narrative of the music in the RGB sequence that we're trying to accomplish. And that can be a, a multitude of clip art or custom designs and backgrounds and things that I know that I'll want to animate and carry the story with. Uh, once I have those, I'll put those all in a central repository and I have each of those components and I'll, then I'll launch Adobe After Effects and basically begin to stub out the actual design. In After Effects, I'll create a composition in the same aspect ratio as the grid that's being sequenced. In this case, we're doing a chimney, so it's got like a 1-4 aspect ratio. You see this vertical black box which represents that. I begin to create compositions and import all of my images and video assets of which I'll use to an animate using keyframe animations and effects to coordinate the animations with the audio. And so in this case, you'll see that we're looking at the base composition, which includes an intro pre-comp. Pre-comp is a way to group and encapsulate a subset of layers. So if I open that up, then you can see that there's about eight or so layers in this pre-comp. Now, one of those layers is like Santa Claus, and we have Rudolph, and we have some snowflakes and falling presents. And if we start to scrub through there, then you can see that, for example, this background, which is the North Pole PNG file, 
If I open that up, it's got some keyframes associated to the opacity. So I've set it up just to fade in. That's because I want all of that RGB matrix to fade in on that background. And then we see the snow falling. And then we see Santa Claus there. If we click on the Santa Claus frame, then you can see the keyframes that indicate the motion. So if you expand that, look at the transform and see the position has several keyframes um, that are controlling his movement. Obviously, um, as I was finding and generating the assets for these animations, I was considering the style that I was going for. What's the tonal quality I want? You know, what's the theme? an effect that I want and my inclination was to use flat graphics like cartoon effects but then to make them look like cutouts so by applying a drop shadow on everything to push and control the layering within the animation uh, and so in that regard you'll notice that there are drop shadows on just about everything that give that effect and separate the layers from the background to the foreground to the intermediate ground and so in doing so I've created this animation just through a sequence of um, going back through and iterating on this to get the motions just right and smooth, get the easing just right on the keyframe interpolations, and then of course correlating to the music that's playing. So if I play this back you'll get a sense of what it does. So you can see the, the packages drop, Santa comes out again, Rudolph comes out, and then his nose lights up, and then we segue. That's really the intro pre-comp. So dealing with the, that set of graphics and those animations in a central area makes it easy to use that. So then when I want to use that combination of animations, I just have this one pre-comp. The main composition of the design carries the audio. So if I play it back with audio, it'll make more sense. Well, let's be on our way. Ready, Rudolph? Ready, Santa. Okay, Rudolph, full power. You get the idea. So using Adobe After Effects to do all the motion graphics for the animations that I want to do on the RGB display make it easy. That's what After Effects is made for. In fact, the intro to my channel is done in the same way using After Effects with lots of layers and lots of keyframes and effects that are built in there. We even use some of the particle systems uh, for some of the animation effects in this sequence. Ultimately, when you've completed the portion, uh, you're going to export that to video. So I'll render that and generally I'll demonstrate it first to make sure that it translates well. In this case, so you can see I've got a demo composition which does a pixel overlay. That allows me to see how well the graphics will lend themselves to the resolution of the RGB nodes prior to exporting them. You can see that looks pretty good. If I zoom out, you can see it, it still carries a lot of the detail and resolution. Ultimately, we'll render that out as AVI. Once you've exported the video from After Effects, you can bring that into Lightshow Pro. In Lightshow Pro, we've got a configuration of multiple layers, but we have one specific layer which consists of all of the controllers which represent the RGB matrix for the chimney. In the lower left hand corner you can see that it rotated 90 degrees to the right and in Lightshow Pro all we need to do is create a transition or a macro effect on that layer. You can see we have specific settings. We can identify the duration, the frames per second. We identify the video and then we click OK. Doing so will generate the animation frame by frame for that RGB matrix in a manner that represents the lighting commands for each of the RGB nodes on that RGB matrix. You can see as I scrub through there, the animation is being performed. And so that's really it. Um, so once all of the work is really done in After Effects, when you bring it into Lightshow Pro, it's going to create static animations in relation to each of the controllers and each of the controller channels. Uh, each channel for individual RGB pixel will then allow you to specifically go in and tweak something if you need to. But obviously you can see through this process, it saved hundreds of man hours to manually create those effects, especially since these are all static controllers, which represent multiple sections of that RGB matrix. This particular RGB matrix has five controllers, each responsible for a different section. From Lightshow Pro, we can then export the light commands in a format for that controller and then play them back directly on the matrix. Okay, so that's all there is to it. Let's recap. So first, we have to know what we're trying to accomplish. Once we know the theme and the graphic elements and the intent and the energy, the song and all of that, we can bring it together in After Effects with the right graphic assets to generate the keyframe animations. This is really easy to do in After Effects and then we can export them to video. Uh, exporting them to an AVI file and ingesting them into our light control software, which in this case is Lightshow Pro. Then we can convert that video image and all of those frames into static 
take light control commands and those will be responsible for turning on individual RGB pixels and whatnot. Export that into a protocol that the controllers understand and then we're good to go. Let's not minimize this. This isn't trivial and each of these displays when you aggregate all of the design time and the sequencing time and the hardware configuration it can take up to 30 hours for each song and that's just really for the sequencing the graphics animation sequencing part of it it can be very time consuming and that's not even to mention once you get out and you start to set up your display all of the hardware how it's going to be attached to your house but anyway hopefully this was useful to understand the amount of complexity and work that goes into these large holiday displays and break it down into simple components that if you're really interested that you understand one approach to solving all these problems in the meantime having these little side gigs helps pay for all of the fun stuff that we do on the channel and hopefully you learn something along the way if you have any specific questions or you're interested in doing this sort of thing to your house then leave a message below or hit me up through diy.engineering contact form i'll help you out however i can all right, in this segment, we're gonna talk about adding voice control to a particle photon using an echo dot. Now this is gonna be quick because it's so super easy, and that's due to the fact that there are online services like If This and That that can help you do mashups. If you have a particle photon, then you've set up an account, you're familiar with their online IDE, and it's just a matter of adding a couple lines to your project that include particle dot subscribe with the name of the event, then the name of the function that will be called when the event is raised. The event can be raised by any external system, another function, photon or any integrator that can raise photon event. That could be by way of using the particle API in JavaScript or another particle device itself. In addition to that, we could leverage something like If This and That. Fortunately, If This and That also talks to the Alexa and the Echo Dot. In addition to just recognizing vocal commands, you can include events that are raised when to-do items are added to your list, when they've been completed, when timers go off, and everything of that nature. The easiest way to do that is to leverage the If This and That integration trigger. So when you want to activate an If This and That recipe by a voice command, you just have to use the trigger keyword. So in which case, I could say echo trigger lights on Sending that to it. and the echo receives that vocal command it knows that if this and that is set up with that vocal command and it will trigger that event on the if this and that end the event is received and then since I've got my account set up for photon and if this and that it'll raise the event to my photon if my photons on and listening then the rest is history we can implement any functionality that we want in the method that responds to that event so I've been using the echoes for a while and I was very happy with those. When the Echo Dot came out about a week ago, I thought I'd give those a try. These are about $49, $50 on the Amazon store. And effectively what you get is a device. It comes in a really nice box, it's embossed, it's got a soft touch matte finish and a gloss printed name on it. You peel off the soft nylon tape, open it up, and it's really just the Echo Dot, which looks like a hockey puck with a charging unit and a cable. Now this is a second one, I have another one set up over here, and it does all sorts of useful things. We've got this one already registered, so let's head over to the workbench and we'll see a quick example. The cool thing about Echo is it's got a far field voice detection, which means it can be clear across the room and still understand what you said. Now the, over here at the workbench, we've got this little breadboard set up with a photon on it. It's also wired up to this RGB strip. I've got it set up to the event so that I can turn it on simply by saying Echo trigger lights on. Sending that to it. Echo trigger lights next. Sending that to it. So you get the idea. The possibilities are endless. But once you have the voice command implemented using if this and that, Amazon Echo Dot, and a photon, you can just have fun all day long changing the logic. <laughs> All right, so that's all we're gonna cover in today's episode. Hopefully you enjoyed the process of going from concept to creation and producing a large Mega Matrix RGB animation. Oh, or maybe you, you'll be able to use some of this voice controlled activation with your particle photon and an echo dot. Either way, you know, as long as you're enjoying the process and you're learning, that's what it's all about. If you have any questions related to either one of these topics or you wanna see more, please head over to DIY.engineering webs and send a comment. As usual, stay safe, have fun. I can't wait to see you next time.